sure this is right. <laughs> this is someone's driveway. You walk up it and then you find a magical place. We're in America though, you don't just walk up someone's driveway. <laughs> I know. I'm a bit nervous. Okay, you go first. No! <laughs> <laughs> no, you go first, because if I get shot then you'll have to grab the camera. It really makes me wonder. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, never in a million years did I think we would end up here in the middle of nowhere, Ohio. Natalie just said something that's absolutely true. This does remind us of a lot of the Route 66 stuff. It has that feeling, especially the, uh, what was the Elmer's Bottle Tree Ranch? Yes, that's what I was thinking of. It's just like that. There's a not tower of Not quite as junky though. There is a tower of bullets. <laughs> How many do you think are in there? 71,388. <laughs> I read it. I mean, that's off the top of my head. Natalie <laughs> never reads anything except for that one thing I wanted to catch you on. <laughs> on the sign that Natalie rudely read, um, it does say that this is, there is one shell casing for every man or woman that died uh, from Ohio in any of the wars from 1812 until today. So. That's a lot of people just from one state. 71,388 so far. And every time another one happens, he puts another shell in. Definitely does have a lot of gates around, doesn't he? Yeah. Gates and fences. Oh no, look. I find that quite offensive. Oh. <laughs> yeah, go on Ram guys. Ram and Chevy guys. <laughs> laugh, laugh your head off. I'm gonna find a Chevy and Ram one now. <laughs> Maybe he's like, I like that boulder. That's a nice boulder. Where's that from, Lawrence? Shrek. Well done! I like that boulder. <laughs> that is a nice boulder. So I actually lied earlier. I mean, we are in the middle of nowhere, Ohio, mm -hmm. with nothing really around, but we found two things to do today. True. And we weren't going to do anything. We we're going to catch up and work and stuff. Yes, we have a um, lot to catch up. However, Natalie did find two things. This is one of them. Yep. And the other one is an air and space museum yes. dedicated to Neil Armstrong. Yes. Because we are in, just off the top of my head, Wapakoneta. That's exactly how you say that. <laughs> uh, and this is where Neil Armstrong was born. So that's cool, isn't it? Fun fact. Yeah, but you never, th you would never think that he was born here. You always think he's going to be in some fancy rich place with amazing education. Or I'm even not saying, a centre, like with a, the wait, university. Wait, 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 I'm going to insult people by saying oh. that. I didn't mean to say that this isn't, hasn't got good educa education. I know nothing about it. But normally with things like that, you expect them to be from New York or California, somewhere, mm. you know, some fancy place or Harvard or Oxford. No, that's English. <laughs> and what did you say before I interrupted you? Uh, just in a city where, where a good university is, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Which yeah. there is a university here that's called UNOH which is University of Northern Ohio, but it looks oh, like okay. it's like, oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Every time I ride past, I'm like, oh no! <laughs> what university did you go to? Oh no! <laughs> oh no! It just keeps going. Uh, it's, a, yeah. It's something else. It's everywhere. It just, you think it's just one little section and then it keeps going and then it keeps going and then it keeps going. How much land does he own? Oh no! Like a tiny little house on the street and then it's he's got like the biggest backyard I've ever seen. So anyway, a bit about this place because it is very strange, but it is amazingly peaceful. Mm. It's very windy today and cold, yeah. but it is uh, quite cool. So Jim Bowsher, this is his house. You pull up outside his house, you drive up his driveway, and then he seems to own all the land behind all the houses. Yeah. Everyone has little postage stamp 
backyards and then he has everything else by the looks of it. But it took him 25 years to build this. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he did for a trade before he did this. I'm assuming he's retired, I'm not sure. But he uh, moved every single rock himself, pretty much. Almost, yeah. There from is some nearby... massive ones, yeah. there's no way. <laughs> but yeah, so you, you said from nearby farms. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing the farmer wanted them rid of so that he could use the land. Man, there is some big rocks here. Yeah. trying to get you a personalized tour from Jim himself. And it's Bowsher, by the way, I got it wrong earlier. Um, but uh, we couldn't get through. So they say you can call ahead and he'll give you a tour. And he loves to talk about it, apparently. He is self-confessed talker. Um, but he was, so some of the information just off the top of my head that we didn't Google at all. He was a archeologist. Fun fact, when I was like 14, I wanted to be an archeologist. You'd make a great one. I would. There's no money in it, is the problem. No. <laughs> so, yeah, it wouldn't have paid the bills. Uh, so he's an archaeologist uh, and a historian. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of this stuff is quite accurate. And he actually, a lot of the rocks were from the glacier line. Yes. Where the glacier came through. So he followed that to take the rocks from it. Now, this is cool. If you were watching uh, a couple of weeks ago, we went to the Shawshank prison. And uh, so I'm on a little bit of a prison roll right now. But this is cool. This is an original, like, solitary cell door from the Wapakoneta jail. Look at that glass. That's cool. It's like bulletproof glass in there and then a slidey thing. Love it. <coughs> but anyway, so he has built this for everyone to enjoy and to feel accepted, which is why there is a lot of memorials to a lot of different things, whether it be the war or the Holocaust or mechanics or something else. Mm. So there's a lot of interesting things like that. But yeah, it's basically for everyone to feel accepted. It is open 24 seven, seven days a week. I don't know what this looks like on film, but this is pretty amazing, isn't it? It's very impressive. It is. So he's built this whole temple here. So we're now at the top of the temple here. And there's a fire pit up here. He's obviously got some chairs. Well, I wouldn't call them chairs. Uh, bricks you can stand on. It's really impressive. This is way better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> no offence. <laughs> they look like a goat. That top rock. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah. Maybe it's a sacrificial goat. Uh, oh, it's got those creepy goblins underneath. It's just amazing because everywhere you look there is something interesting. Yeah. Natalie even just noticed like a there's a concrete urn over there where, and it's got a rag on it and we don't know whether that's normal or whether it's normally just a, a statue. We would never ask this question normally. <laughs> this is not an everyday question. <laughs> I've literally lost Natalie now. I have no idea where she is because it goes into all these sections and there's tons of gates everywhere and you can just get absolutely lost. Like you can go through there. I need to find Natalie though, I don't know where she is. Oh, she's still over here. A little look of this thing. Is that what it's called? Yeah, an obelisk. We see these everywhere. Yeah. I still don't know the reason why. It's, oh, someone told us something about to commemorate the lives lost of that area or something. Yeah, I know, but why obelisk? Why the shape? Oh, no, that I can't remember. Pyramid or, yeah. I mean, I guess it kind of is a pyramid, just a really long one. But why pyramid? That's true. <laughs> well, it's the, the pyramid, isn't the pyramid the most, the, the, the strongest possible structure? I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. If yeah. anyone can let us know why they use an obelisk and if a pyramid is the strongest ever structure, that would be helpful, thanks. So I'm guessing a lot of this has been donated as well. Like... If someone's got a really interesting rock in their yard and is like, I know where that belongs. I know who would like this. Jim. Jim. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think you're probably right because there is a lot of things, a lot of statues that there's no way he dug up or carved. Um, and so, yeah, there's a lot of old bricks that are obviously from building things and then the gates and fences, maybe he just sourced them for free or salvaged them from somewhere. But it's so much like Elmer's Bottle Tree Ranch, but yeah. not junk. Yeah. Although I will say I'm very disappointed with the trash here. 
stop throwing your bottles and cans on the floor. Yeah, there is a lot of trash. I can't imagine it was Jim. It could be. It says Landy can do what he wants, but yeah. I'm getting all lost again. Like, this is insane. Insane. I'm back. Where are we? Are we heading back now? I have no idea. We've been here for three days. <laughs> so I was also just reading up off the top of my head, just accessing those memories. Um, he So he actually owns all the land behind all the houses, which works out to about 12 yards, typical yards for around here. What's that, acres? I'm guessing a couple of acres, maybe. Mm. Why would they put those up? Well, no, I don't think it's to keep people out or keep people in, because you can just move them. They're just hung there. Yeah. So I think it's just more of a fence there. Uh, so also off the top of my head, Natalie, yeah. uh, he is never going to sell this. Um, but he does want to um, donate it to the county, state or city. Yes. As long as... They keep it open. They keep it open 24-7, seven days a week. It's free and they do not change anything. So I'm guessing Jim's a bit older now, so I think he's planning for the future. But he said if that doesn't happen, then he'll dismantle it himself. I think if the city take it over, there's going to have to be some more... Um safety measures in place that's true they probably would have to have something <laughs> which is then going to ruin it yeah that's a good point i wonder how they get around that yeah maybe they can do the best they can but yeah i hope they don't you need seriously this is cool isn't it people often ask us why we choose the places that we go to and we did a video about this a while back where yeah. we don't really choose we just go where the campsite takes us that allows dobermans and there's a good internet that's that's literally it so sometimes it lands us in places where people are like, why are you there? Well, I mean, there's two, no, sometimes it's like we have to go here, Acadia National Park. Oh, okay. We went to Maine. But like here, we, this is almost a stopping stop, on, stop our, point, yeah. on our way somewhere. And when we get here, we have a look around to see what we can find. But what, my point was, someone said to me, you always seem to stop at really interesting places. Well, they, to those words, and I thought, no, actually, we just happen to find yeah. interesting places wherever we stop. But it's because people go to the main places like Acadia, and they don't really look around on those little things and take a risk to go into some guy's backyard. Yeah. <laughs> which you absolutely should do if it's open. Not just anyone's backyard, that would be weird. <laughs> Make sure you're allowed. Jim is still alive, right? Yes. That got me off guard as well. I'm like... Is he here? So off the top of my head, the sign here says, if you never met Jim Bowsher while he was still alive, he is standing right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> we have to come back here when he passes. That's not nice. Well, I guess it is, just to see. Yeah. I don't, oh no. <laughs> so there is quite a few fire pits around as well. And I'm wondering, I don't know whether that's Jim or whether he puts it there for people to come and hang out. He does because it's for the... Um, it's for the... The teenagers. Yeah. It's a refuge. I read something. For dysfunctional families or something. Yes. So it's a place for them to come. And just you know, I can imagine stuff. yeah, I can imagine if there's teenagers and the parents are having issues or they're, you know, not the best parents, they can come and hang out here. So yes. yeah, they can have a little fire. And it looks like it's been used, so that's nice. It does, yeah. Yeah, you're right. But that would that would uh, make make sense for the litter that is around. Yeah, yeah, true. It's not a lot of litter, but there's enough to for it to be frustrating. Oh my god, we're back at the barrel thing again. <laughs> we are so lost. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we need to go that way. Head south. I want to find this cemetery. Oh yeah. This is a huge barrel house. D are you just saying that because I said it? You did just say it's a barrel house. <laughs> but, I mean, it's covered at the moment to stop the rain getting in, obviously, because yeah. he's trying to preserve it. Do you know what it was originally though? Barrel. It was a liquor barrel. And Shut it was, up. No, it was during the prohibition and uh, it's got holes in it because when the prohibition came about, they just shot holes in it with a gun and then it leaked all the oh, liquor out. Oh, I was just out. saying that. I didn't actually know it was a barrel yeah. house. No, it is, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's a liquor barrel. That's cute. No, we're back at the bullets. Now we know why they have gates going leading out because people get lost. I don't know where they're going. Right, so it's up here. Okay, that's a rain. <laughs> this is insane. One word of advice, if you come here at the end of the year like we are, wear a hard hat because there is a whole bunch of black walnut trees that are just throwing stuff around all over the place. <laughs> I keep thinking someone's throwing something at me. We're back in the safe. 
Oh, I didn't know there was a safe. I missed the safe. I got the safe. Oh. It's like the crystal maze. <laughs> That's showing our age. That, yeah, that was a TV show in the UK called The Crystal Maze. I don't think they had it here. With Richard O'Brien was the presenter. Fun fact, off the top of my head. Can you believe we've been here for like an hour and a half? Kind of, only because the reviews did say that you can spend a good couple of hours here. And I thought, why would you spend a couple of hours in someone's no. backyard? Now I see why. That's but insane. The more you look, the more you look. Yeah. The more you look. It's really weird. Yeah, it's fascinating. Hmm. Right, well, uh, we obviously, we honestly weren't going to make this video. Um, we, we weren't even going to do anything this weekend. We were just going to do some work and catch up. So I'm very glad we made the trip out here. Um, so cameras don't really do it justice with some places. The Grand Canyon was one. Yeah. Um, Monument Valley. Monument Valley, Death Valley, some of the yeah. big stuff. Even Elmer's Bottle Tree Ranch was very similar. You have to come here because everywhere you turn and look, you just see some weird stuff yeah. and it's really interesting. So we definitely recommend you come here. There is a donation box. We're going to throw 20 bucks in there for the guy, um, but it's fantastic. So anyway, thank you for watching. This is probably a short video. Yeah. So short and yeah. sweet. Short and sweet. So don't forget to like, subscribe, share this with someone if you know the, of them in the Ohio area. Yeah. Um, and don't forget to hit the thanks button because Natalie loves it when you do that. And if you'd like to come up Brazil and support a couple of tits, Natalie and myself, go ahead and hit the join button. Thank you to everyone who has already done that. We really appreciate your support. My GoPro keeps crashing, so I need to buy a new one. Not GoPro. Not GoPro. All right, all right, not GoPro. All right, anyway, we will see you next week.